Hello students. In the previous video, we showed you how to interpret raising a number to the power of zero. In this video, we're going to show you how to interpret raising a number to a negative power. Now, before we can do that, we need to do a quick review of the reciprocal of a number. So 2 over 3, the reciprocal of that is just 3 over 2. In other words, we swap the numerators and denominators. Sometimes we just say we flip the fraction over. 1 over 5, if we flip the fraction over, then that becomes 5 over 1. And of course, anything divided by 1 is just itself, so that becomes 5. If we have a whole number, well, 6 can be written as 6 over 1, so its reciprocal becomes 1 over 6. And even if we have an expression in our denominator, we can rewrite that is 3 to the 4th over 1, or just 3 to the 4th. And we're going to have to use the idea of reciprocals to help us understand negative powers. OK, now let's use our calculator to help us work out how we interpret negative powers. So. 2 to the power of negative 2. Let's just type that in. 2 raised to the power of negative 2 gives us 0 0.25 as a decimal, but as a fraction, that's the same as 1 quarter. Let's see if we can find a pattern to all of this. Let's try 5 to the negative 1. 5 raised to the negative 1. 0 0.2, or as a fraction, is 1 fifth. We'll do one more, look for a pattern, and then test it on the last question. 10 raised to the power of negative 3, and as a fraction, 1 over 1,000. OK, let's have a look at what we have so far and see if we can figure out what a negative power, how we can interpret that. OK, let's look at this one in particular. 10 to the negative 3 becomes 1 over 1,000. Well, 1,000 is 10 to the power of 3. So 10 to the negative 3 becomes 1 over 10 to the positive 3. So it looks like we write the reciprocal of 10, 1 over 10, and we change the power to a positive power. Does it work for this one? Well, 4 is the same as 2 squared, so yes, it does work. 2 to the negative 2 is the same as 1 over 2 to the positive 2. 5 to the negative 1 is the same as 1 over 5 to the positive 1. So if it's going to work for this question, that's going to be 1 over 5 to the positive 2, which is 1 over 25. OK, let's go and check and see if that actually does work. So what is 5 raised to the negative 2 power? And as a fraction, and it does check, 1 over 25. So the index law for negative numbers written algebraically is any number to the negative power, like 10 to the negative 3, can be rewritten as 1 over same base but to the positive power. And there's the index law for negative powers. And how do you think you would say that in words? You might want to stop the video, have a think about it. I'll give you a hint. It's going to use the, the word reciprocal because we're using reciprocals here. And let's go ahead and let you know. OK, so looking at index law number 7. We'll zoom in on that so we can read it a bit easier. A negative power is the reciprocal of the positive power. So we've got a negative power here equals the reciprocal of 1 over the positive power. And for an example, if we have 3 multiplied by k to the negative 4, well, the 3 stays on top, and the k to the negative 4 becomes 1 over k to the positive 4. OK, let's go ahead and simplify these. So I'm going to do the 3 on the left, and then I want you to try the 3 on the right. So 
AB to the negative 5. I want to rewrite this without negative indices. Well, the A stays on top because it doesn't have a, a negative power. The B to the negative 5 goes to the denominator and gets changed to B to the positive 5. What if your negative, uh, negative power is already in the denominator? We'll just take the reciprocal of that. So therefore, that becomes A to the um, negative 4, but we change it to positive, that becomes a to the positive 4. So 1 over a to the negative 4, take the reciprocal and change it to positive, becomes a to the positive 4. Okay, with this last one, I've got a 6 on top. I've got a y squared on top, because neither of those is raised to a negative power. And the x to the negative 5 goes to the denominator, but that becomes x to the positive 5. Okay, stop the video and uh, try the remaining three questions, please. Okay, welcome back, students. Let's see how you went here. So we need to write the reciprocal of h to the negative 2, which is 1 over h to the positive 2. So write the reciprocal and change the sign from negative to positive. 4p to the negative 3 well, the 4 stays in the numerator because it is uh, is not raised to a negative power. And the p to the negative 3 becomes p to the power of positive 3 in the denominator. Okay, and the last one, the negative 4 stays on top. The g squared stays on top. And the h to the negative 1 goes to the denominator but we don't write the power of 1. So it's just negative 4g squared all over h. Okay, now in this uh, page, what we'd like you to do is first rewrite each of these expressions with a positive index, and because these are numbers, then evaluate it, which means turn it into an actual number. So, for example, I'm going to do this whole page, then you're going to try a page on your own. 4 to the negative 2 is 1 over 4 to the positive 2 using our new index law. 4 to the power of 2 is 16, so that becomes 1 16th. I'll do this one next. 4 stays on top. 3 to the negative 2 becomes 3 to the positive 2 in the denominator. And 3 squared just equals 9, so it's 4 to the power of 9. Third question, well, this negative sign can be brought up to the numerator. So that gives us negative 7 on top. The 3 stays in the denominator. The 3 to the negative 2 goes to the denominator, becomes 3 to the positive 2. And 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27. And the last one, 3 stays on top. Now the reciprocal of 2 to the negative 1 is 2 to the 1. Sorry, the reciprocal of 1 over 2 to the negative 1 is 2 to the negative 1. But because we're moving it to the numerator, oops, we change the power to a positive, And that just gives us 6. OK, you try the next four questions, please. Okay, let's see how he went with these. So 3 to the negative 3 is 1 over 3 to the positive 3, which is 1 over 27. 4 times 2 to the negative 2, well, the 4 stays on top because we're multiplying. The 2 to the negative 2 goes to the denominator, becomes 2 squared. 2 squared is just 4. And all of that simplifies to 1. With this one, we're going to move the negative sign up to the 2. So that gives us a negative 2 on top. The 4 squared stays in the denominator. The 4 to the negative 2 goes to the denominator, becoming positive. That gives us negative 2 over. Well, 4 squared is 16. 4 squared is 16. 16 times 16 is 256. 
And finally, we've got to simplify this. So divide top and bottom by 2. And that's negative 1 over 128. And the last one, 4 stays on top. The 3 goes to the top as well. And the sign changes from negative to positive. And 4 times 3 is 12. So that shows you how to interpret a negative index. OK, we're going to stop there with index laws. And in the remaining videos, we're going to be looking at some uh, problems where we have to apply more than one index law to a, uh, to a problem in order to find the answer. OK, so we'll see you in the next video.